What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about my five, five favorite finesse plastic rigs to be throwing right now in the spring. So if your water is a little bit chilly, a little bit cold, sub 60 degrees, these are things that I really like to throw. Now, I'm in the Midwest, Great Lakes kind of region. I'm up in Michigan, but these are rigs that can be thrown all around the country and surprisingly enough are going to land you a ton of fish guaranteed these are straight spring classics we've got a few new mixes in here that we're going to throw at you and i'm really looking at this from an easy to source and rig perspective so these are going to be more like beginner rigs but i'll give you a few advanced ideas but the five we're talking about today are specifically rigs that i've had a lot of experience fishing over the past couple of years and have landed a ton of fish on and i think you guys are going to like them. we'll also talk a little bit about the rigs that i would throw these things on as far as rod and reel and line setup so we're going to get to that in a second before we do if you guys like the content consider subscribing to the channel smash the like on this video and ring that notification bell helps us out a lot and then you'll know when we drop more content as we're going through these top five rigs these are my top five rigs my favorite rigs to be thrown right now you let me know what your favorite rigs are. But if there's something in these top five that you guys really like, let me know your favorite in the comments below as we go through this. Okay, so what are the five main rigs that we're talking about today? Number one, the Ned rig. Specifically, something like this mushroom headed jig on straight shank hook with some sort of worm style bait. Now you can mix that up with a cross style bait. That'll be part of the advanced or other options you can throw around. So a lot of different weights that we can mess around with with this as well. We're gonna get to it in a second. Number two, drop shot. One of my favorite finesse options to throw around, specifically when I'm struggling to get bit. So I like to throw a little tungsten tube style weight at the bottom of this, and I'll run that on like a 12 to 18 inch leader, and then we'll throw something, some sort of plastic rigging up on top. We'll talk about options. Number three, we got a straight classic with a fluke style rig. So we can rig that weightless in a whole bunch of different ways that we'll talk about. Number four would be a shaky head rig. It's a little ball head jig on this one, but there's a lot of different ways that these things come packaged. We'll look at a couple different kinds. And number five, you're gonna be like, finesse? Yes, finesse, we'll see why in a second. But a Tokyo rig. Love throwing these things around, especially in the spring when that cover's a little bit lower. So let's zoom in on a couple of these baits. I'm gonna start with my favorite, number one, the Ned rig, which has become really popular over the past like five to 10 years. So let's, let's take a look at this thing. So I got a couple of straight shank hook options for you here. We've got that mushroom head style jig. It's just a rounded kind of head to that. And then we've got the straight shank hook. These come in a bunch of different sizes as far as the hooks go. And then the worms also come in a whole bunch of different styles and sizes as well. So here we've got an X zone, Ned zone, like this goby color in purple, which I think is great. It's got a little egg shape at the tip of it. So that's gonna give you a little bit more action on the bottom. Decently durable plastic as well. Looks good fish eat it. Next one, we got what I lovingly call the Shark Deuce. This is the Copper Truce color from Z-Man. It's their Finesse TRD or the real deal. These things are inexpensive. Each pack is about $4.99. You get eight baits in each of those. They last literally forever and they're made of this Elaztec, right? So super stretchy, super durable. This bait right here could land you 50, 60, 70 fish before it dies or breaks off. So something very useful to have on you. Now the Ned Rig is something that we throw on a medium, maybe a medium light or a light power, fast action rod. I'm looking for that fast action because it's a light bite that we're usually getting on. Fish just kind of like sip it up. So I'm gonna see that right in the tip of the rod. I also recommend high vis braided line for this. Just go lighter, like 10 pounds on that braid when you're using those lighter power rods. That works out really well. That way you can see where the line is. And if that line goes taut and then you see the tip go down, you're gonna be able to react a little bit better to those subtle bites that you're getting on this little tiny bait. Especially if you're going with a lighter Ned, it's almost a necessity. On top of that, I'd recommend a fluorocarbon leader. So a fluorocarbon line in water is basically invisible. The fish don't see it. And this is a subtle finesse rig. We're trying to get the fish just to react to this. We usually just dead stick it, just sits on the bottom, just like this. The current is gonna make all the action happen for you depending on the bait that you're throwing. Uh, so just like a Z-Man finesse TRD where it doesn't do anything, it's just gonna have a little subtle movement like that versus something like the Ned Zone 
from X Down is gonna have a bit more action versus one of my all time favorites, the Foxtail from Rabid Baits, which has this fur molded right into it. That fur is gonna have a ton of action at the tip of this bait as well. So you got a couple different variations. Depending on what they're reacting to, just you know, read the water, listen to the fish, and then react. Switch the baits up until you start getting bites. Things like that help out a lot. Having that fluorocarbon leader means that they're only seeing this, they're not seeing your line. Typically, I'm throwing this in finesse conditions where I have these fish that are not reacting as much. They're a little bit more hesitant to bite, so they might be line shy, and I don't want them seeing that high vis braid, so we throw it on fluorocarbon. As far as the reel, it's up to you. I usually go with a finesse sized reel, so a little bit downsized, maybe a 2000 size reel, maybe smaller. I'm um, not going for anything big on that. You don't really need to. Essentially, that whole rig just screams finesse. A couple variations that you might try with your Ned rig would include craw style baits. So here we have the Savage Gear 4D craw. These things are insanely realistic. Look at that thing. Looks awesome. A little green pumpkin, a little blue on the bottom, which is kind of the color that our crayfish have been around here lately. So that's something I might throw. Now, if I'm rigging this in the river, something to consider with the weight of your neds and the type of ned that you're using is important. I'll rig a heavier ned head. This is a 3 8 ounce right here for the river because it's a crayfish and it's usually just zooming between rocks on the bottom of the river. So I'll huck this thing out and I'll let the current take it. Literally just, you can see too, like how beat up kind of the ball head of this jig is. Look at that. That's from just knocking around rocks. So I just cast this out. It's gonna run like this right through the current and fish are gonna key in on that, grab it, take a bite. Something else that you'll notice is that that hook is an EWG. So if you guys haven't seen these, there's a few different companies out there making them. There will be more coming. They're getting more popular. You'll probably see some in tungsten too as well. This one here is from Lifted Jigs. It's a little more of a tapered head. And this one here is from Owner Hooks. It's called the Blockhead. So a couple different variations there. Again, we'll probably see tungsten in these very soon. Let me show you a couple of the plastics that I like to throw here. Here's a variation that has caught me some fish lately uh, in the spring. So this is called the Turd Tickler or the TRD, the real deal by the way, is what that stands for. Ticklers, it's a tube style bait, as you can see there, it's got little tentacles on it. And then if you rig it backwards like so, here's the hook, you can actually take one of those tentacles, push it down over the hook point. And it also simulates like a spider skirt of a jig. So it's gonna look more like a finesse jig on the bottom. Give it a little more action, a little better presentation. It looks good, fish eat it. Trust me, I've caught some big ones on this so far this year. So I like that rig for sure. We could also throw something like the Rabid Baits Cross. So it's a cross style bait, but it has that same fur just now built into uh, the, the claws of a crayfish, right? Look at that presentation there. Call them pom-poms, it's my little cheerleader right here. Just sits on the bottom of the river, cheering like that. This fur is moving, it has some crazy action underwater, especially with the current. And this thing's gonna sit like this, right? So it's literally just doing that. If I'm running it in the river, it's kind of bumping around on the rocks looking like that. That also tends to get me a lot of bites, which is great. Can also throw something like a tickle tail. So this one comes from Angler's Choice and it's got just like a really finessey tip to it. Look at that thing, look how narrow that is. It's insane. This one comes in a Canada Craw color. So it's got like this green pumpkin and then red and gold flake to it. But the tickle tail is the action we're looking for. That's gonna draw that bite in. And again, it's just sitting on the bottom like this. It went barely moving, that tickle tail is going nuts. Add a little bit of current in, this thing is gonna look crazy good. I actually had uh, Debo's Fishing send this over in a recent little crossover unboxing that we did. That was a ton of fun, so appreciate you, man, for sending that over. By the way, all these Ned Rig jigs I'm using are from Super K Jigs. If you guys wanna check them out, you can use code BURLY15, B-U-R-L-Y-1-5, get 15% off your order. Go ahead and do that. Helps us out of the show a bit and also supports a awesome company with Super K. They hand make all of their stuff. A couple other variations you can throw on the Ned Rig just to throw it out there for you guys. You can always throw something like these Lunker Hunt finesse baits which come in a little mini paddle tail. Throwing a paddle tail on a Ned Rig can be a legit presentation. Something totally different they don't often see. When it's sitting on the bottom, that tail is gonna give you a bit of action. But then when you do like a lift and swing retrieve, you're gonna get that paddle tail moving. So it could look like a fish kind of feeding on the bottom, could look like a wounded bait fish dying, and then you could just straight swim it like you would any other paddle tail or finesse swimming bait. So 
Lots of legit options that you can do with this thing that look really good. And if you want to support another small company, go check out Online Outdoorsman. He runs Mule Fishing and they do a really cool looking paddle tail that is sort of an Elastec plastic. It's super durable. So go check them out. This is a newer bait from Z-Man. You guys got to check out. It's called the Baby Goat. So it's a little tiny downsize kind of creature style bait. Let me break these legs apart. That's going to give you these little legs that have a lip to them. So they're going to move a ton when they're moving through the water. This is uh, an upsized Ned rig. It's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, but that's fine. You'll still get bit on it. This one comes in the color called the deal, which is like this baby blue with some like, with some like shiny flakes in there and a green pumpkin color. Great color to throw in any of their rigs that they have. Again, with the Elastec, so hyper durable. Some you can throw on a jig. This actually makes a great little like chatterbait trailer too. Lots of things you can do with that. Some other plastics that I like to throw on a Ned rig, especially when I'm in the river or I'm anywhere around like rock cover. It's gonna be like the Z-Man TRD Bugs. So more of a, a bug style bait with that Z-Man Elastec, which look great. Rig up to the Ned rig just fine. You could also rig them on a small EWG and they look good. Then we got the TRD Craws. If you want a straight invincible, good looking craw plastic, throw these around. Those are fantastic. If you want a high action, semi-durable craw that has an insane smell, just something completely unique, check out the Bellows Craw. These things are absolutely nuts. Look at those claws on that. So big old mitts, they're gonna move a ton in the water. Throw that on a Ned rig. You can also throw it on like a football head jig. There's just tons and tons of options for that one. And then of course I already mentioned and showed you the rigging of, but the Rabid Baits craw is phenomenal. Don't sleep on that bait. All right, next one we were talking about was the drop shot rig. So drop shot, I'm gonna throw on the exact same setup as my Ned rig. It's gonna be that more medium light to light power rod with a fast action tip. And we're gonna run the same kind of setup, high vis braid to a fluorocarbon leader, and that's gonna run into a drop shot hook. In this case, we got a standout hook from Daiichi. This is one of my favorite drop shot hooks to throw. Not only is it good and sharp and like keeps fish pinned really well, but it's got a unique design back here, as you can see, where you'll do a Palomar knot to this hook bend right here. And then you'll take your tag line, run it down through this eye, and then bring it down whatever you want. Six, 12, 18 inches is great, down to a little tungsten tube style or lead, whatever you wanna do, they both work obviously. Uh, but a tube style weight at the bottom. I like the tube style because I feel like it pulls through cover really well. If I'm just around rocks, if you guys don't have a ton of grass or anything like that, thick weeds, whatever, then you can use a teardrop and those work really well too. I just prefer to use this because I've got really weedy lakes that I usually fish. And in the river, this doesn't get hung up nearly as much when I'm throwing around like trees and rock and different stuff like that, which is great because you're moving through current and you don't really want to get stuck. It's not ideal. Um, so what do we tip this thing with? Something small, I prefer. This right here is a two inch shad from Cream. Comes in a bunch of different colors, uh, but it's an awesome size, looking like a little bait fish that you know, bass are gonna obviously key in on. That's an easy thing to get bit. Other great options to throw would be something like this little tiny version of the curly tail grub from Chase Baits or the upsized version is a great option as well. Throw a curly tail grub just from Zoom. Any of those basic ones work fine. You could throw a fluke on there, downsize fluke if you want to. One of my other favorites to throw would be Big Bite Baits Smally Smasher. It's like a little ribbed kind of worm style with a big old paddle tail on the back of it. Look at that, it's gonna have a ton of action as well. And you just nose hook these things and they get smashed, Smalley Smasher. They, it, it does what it says it does. And then, and then if you wanna throw something super good looking, check out the Rabid Baits Darter. This thing's fantastic. Got a big old paddle tail on the back of it. Comes in a bunch of different colors. We got like some green, some oranges, some brown options here. And then obviously, this guy right here is one of my favorite colors. It's called the Ghost. Flash in there is nuts. The white fur is on another level. The thing also holds up, it gets bit. Then of course you could just throw like little worms on there. You could throw 
The same kind of Ned rig baits that we were talking about just a second ago, those work great too. Or you can throw like a little paddle tail. Any of the paddle tails you got, as long as they're like under three inches, typically I get bit on those as well. Next up, we got the Fluke. So the Fluke is just kind of like a finesse tail swim plastic and it's a straight classic. I don't know why I've somehow avoided this for so long. I've made mistakes in my life, okay? I think we all have. Uh, but this is just a straight classic rig that always catches fish, especially spring and fall. When you got those lower water temps, this is something you can throw around. There's a bunch of different ways you can rig it. The straight classic is weightless, just like this. And this is a cool newer plastic from Z-Man. It's what they call their streaks. So streaks is a little, a little bit of a different kind of fluke. You can see in the tail here, it's not a forked tail like you normally get, it's more of a tickle tail. With that tickle tail, you can do a whole bunch of different things with this rig and you've got, again, a Laztec, right? So super hyper durable fluke option. A couple different fluke plastics that I like to throw around would include something like the Six Sense Flush. Definitely a larger size plastic. It's a little bit longer, 5.2 inches. Comes in a bunch of different colors, a lot of juicy looking options. Got that forked tail there. Tons and tons of action coming off this thing. And it's fairly durable. So that's something I like throwing around. Plus they send it in a nice clamshell package. So you're not gonna get those kinked up tails or anything like that. Here's an interesting one too. This one's from Excite Baits. Came in one of my Monster Bass bags. This one has a real unique tail, almost more of a ribbon tail to it with a fluke body. So it's a little different variation, something else that you could be throwing out there. We've got the classic white fluke, which is money right now this time of year especially with shad spawn bluegill you know any sort of bait fish around you this white is going to look juicy this is a zoom fluke i mean it's super cheap basically free gonna catch you fish so we talked about rigging this weightless you just kind of texas rig it just like that you could also throw a lightweight on this if you want to get lower into the water column this is something i throw in shallow cover over grass by weed lines things like that and it's a little twitch pause forever maybe a twitch twitch pause forever but it's on that pause as this thing is sitting there maybe if it's a hyper buoyant plastic like the z-man uh, it's going to sit there and float much longer slow 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 sink if it's a more dense plastic like i find these six senses it's going to sink a little bit faster but it's still a weightless plastic so it's going to take a while to get down there you're getting bit on that pause but if you throw a little weight there and you can start super light with that too it's going to start getting you lower in the water column and with that you can hop it on the bottom make it look like a feeding bait fish you can look like it uh, a dying bait fish just let it sit dead stick it for a little bit and you can see something like that tail right there it's going to give you a ton of good action and you're going to get bites off of that too you could also use a fluke as a trailer or rig it with something like a belly weighted hook maybe even throw an underspin there if you want just some variation here this is something that looks really juicy as well and could definitely get you some bites so not a paddle tail a little more of a finesse swim plastic that you could throw or and this is not exactly a finesse rig but it's a finesse or presentation of this rig throw it on a chatter bait check this out so this is a super k jigs clacking it's their variation of a chatter bait it's got a weed guard and kind of a different variation to the shape of that blade this thing chatters like none other it looks great and this white chartreuse is going to be mint and throw that little zoom fluke streaks on there Boom, that's gonna look good. It also helps me put something like a chatterbait where I want it to be in the water column uh, if I wanna fish a little bit deeper. If you wanna fish a chatterbait higher in the water column, just throw a paddle tail or some type of a craw plastic on it. That added action on the back is gonna be more resistant in the water. It's gonna sit higher up versus a fluke style or you know, just an empty chatterbait is gonna fish much lower. For our fluke setup, I can go with the same sort of finesse setup that I've been using for everything so far. So you go with that medium, medium light spinning rig with the downsized spinning reel, high vis line, all of that works just fine. Or throw it on a bait caster. So typically I'd be throwing that on my medium power, fast action tip bait casting setup. I'd have it rigged up kind of the same way though with like a braid backer to a fluorocarbon leader. Fluorocarbon is invisible in the water again. So if we have clearer water conditions, that's kind of, a necessity especially if we have finicky fish so the fish aren't biting they're not keying in on things that are even moving right now they're kind of hitting things while they're dead hence 
finesse, we're finessing. We might be a little subtly aggressive with our actions on them, a little twitch, twitch, pause, give it some like massive action, then let it sit and die for a little while. But if that fluorocarbon's there, it means they're not gonna be line shy, they're not seeing that braid, and they can go and hammer that fluke, which is what we want. So something like that, like a little lighter bait caster setup would work great too. That's typically what I throw mine on. And like a fluke, especially something like the six cents, or if you throw it on a belly weighted hook or something a little bit weighted, but even, you know, weightless, it's a lighter bait, but it's fairly easy to cast on a bait caster too. So just tweak your settings a little bit and you'll be fine. Rig number four is the shaky head worm rig. Looks like this. This is a phenomenal rig to throw, honestly, all year round, uh, but is great for the spring as well. So if the Ned rig's not hitting, and you want to upsize or you want to start this way maybe you like to start with larger baits first that's an option too go with something like a shaky head worm so we're going to throw a trick worm or something like this rabid baits shaker worm something meant to be on a shaky head onto a little ball head jig with a twist lock or a screw lock right on the edge of that so the shaky head jigs come in a lot of different shapes sizes colors and weights and here we got a few that you can take a look at. We got the Super K Jigs, which is more of a ball head style, which is great around rock cover. Kind of pulls over that really well. Doesn't really get hung up as much. We've got more of this like half football head or like flipping style shape to it. These two are Wu Tungsten. Uh, gives you a little slightly different presentation as far as like the angle of that worm as well, or whatever you end up rigging to it. We'll talk about options. Or you have the flat bottom style sit nice and evenly on the bottom these are great for more even terrain uh, so if i'm on a lake a lot of times i'll be throwing something like this versus on the river where i want to be knocking around cover a bit more this is a bit oversized this is a six cents option as well um, but this comes in a whole bunch of different sizes this isn't the only one that they offer this one's a half an ounce and it's got like a five out hook on it so this is gigantic not the size i would normally go for but if i'm throwing an upsize rig or a bigger worm, I might be using something like that. So we already took a look at that Rabid Baits Shaker Worm. Again, love the fur on these things. Love this vibrant purple. Purple is a color I love throwing right now uh, and is getting me a lot of bites, especially with spring runoff from the ground thaw and then melting snow and ice and all that stuff. We get slightly dirtier to stained waters versus cleared waters. And this thing is just hammering in that. Anything purple is hammering right now. I also love throwing trick worms on a shaky head. Throw like a downsized trick worm, something like this cave KVD Perfect Plastics in a watermelon color. Love throwing these things around. It's got sort of that eggshell shape to the tip as well. And it's actually open on one side of it. So it does a pretty cool job of like catching the water and moving a lot more. A little bit more action coming off of this thing. Or that Six Sense Divine Shaky Worm. These things are great. It's got a little bit more of that egg shape at the tip of the tail, right? So if this is sitting upright on the bottom, that tail is gonna be doing that kind of action, which is gonna draw in some bites for sure. Then if you wanna vary it up a little bit, we could throw something like this Missile Baits Quiver Tail. So we got a little flat tail at the tip, right? A little paddle to it and a, a worm body shape to that. Fairly durable plastic. This thing will hold up really well. It's got a lot of stretch to it actually. And that's gonna give you a great variation there. If you wanna extend that further, throw the straight classic juice, the Power Bait, ribbon tail worm these things are fantastic love these come in a couple different sizes this is a, a purple color that i love throwing uh, especially in the spring this thing will hammer for you and then if you want to go real crazy you upsize the thing and you throw something like the six cents ridge worm which is ginormous i think it's like 11 inches it's got a strong body section right here it's a little very short section actually the rest of it is straight this flat tail look at that thing that thing is going to move a ton in the water and this is something i would throw on that upsized six cents shaky head jig right a little bit heavier uh much bigger longer hook right and i'm going for monsters with this thing look at this that's that's uh half the length of my arm right there so that's what you're throwing but uh, i mean it's gonna get bites it's gonna get bites as far as the rig i usually throw these on it's the slightly i'm leaning towards like the heavier power spinning rig so i'll go for like my medium to medium heavy spinning rig with a slightly upsized reel reason i do that is this is something that is typically a little bit heavier than my ned rigs it's a little beefier setup 
Um, I'm letting it sit on the bottom in different cover situations, and I may need to, I may need to horse a fish out of a situation. So, so I typically throw like a Ned rig around looser cover. I could throw a shaggy head into some pretty tight cover because I can rig it completely weedless. Just bury the hook in there. I'll still get a good hook up on this thing. Uh, and I'm running over some heavier cover with this thing and I might get bigger fish. It's a bigger presentation. So I typically lean on like that medium to medium heavy and I'm gonna get away with it just fine. All right, rig number five, one of my favorite newer to me kind of rigs. I think newer on the market too, really. Uh, people definitely make these themselves, but most notably you see like the VMC rigs. They sell them pre-rigged, you get two to a pack. They're not that cheap, but it is a pretty cool rig. And that's the Tokyo rig. So we got something like this. You got a little split ring there. It's a swivel, barrel swivel at the top. That's where your line tie goes. You got an EWG. They also come in like flipping hooks and other variations of hooks that you could throw on the end of this as well. And then a wire coming straight down where you can rig any type of weight that you want. Typically I'll throw a flipping weight or a worm weight on there. In this case, we got a monster bass tungsten flipping weight, which is uh, in this case, five sixteenths of an ounce. I might even rig this a little bit lighter than that. So we get a different presentation on the fall. And here we have the Chase Baits Curly Bait, which is a curly tail grub style bait rigged up there. Um, I like this idea right here. Something that is about this length, seems good for me, definitely gets me bites. And throwing something like a curly tail grub is gonna have that added action. The idea here is that we're letting this sit just up off the bottom. So in the spring, the cover hasn't grown back in yet. So our foliage is not quite there. I can drop this in where there's a little bit of growth, a little bit of cover. Fish are starting to come in, start to start to move around a little bit as the water temp heats up. So we're sitting right off the bottom. And as those fish come around, they're seeing this thing sit like this. We use something in this case, this, this curly bit is really salty. So it's a little bit of a denser plastic. It's not going to float as well. But if I use something like the Z-Man streaks, or a rabid craw or foxtail, it's gonna be a little bit more buoyant. So when it's more buoyant, it's gonna float by itself. It's gonna be doing this thing, moving with the current, right? Creating its own action. We just let it sit. If we don't get a bite after five, 10 seconds, we hop it a little bit, we let it sit. Same thing, rinse and repeat. When the fish are lethargic, when they're finicky, that's what I'm doing. And the cool thing about the Tokyo rig is this is where it all comes together. Basically. Every single plastic we talked about today could go on the Tokyo rig. So let's say you got like a mucky bottom. Then if you Texas rig something, it's just going to get into the muck and get buried. You need to be a little bit off of that. But let's say that the fish are just hugging the bottom. You don't want to be buried in the muck, but you can't be too much higher than that. You can do a real short drop shot or throw something like a Tokyo rig, which is pre-rigged, ready to go two inches off the bottom and could put you right in front of the fish, which is exactly where we need to be when they're lethargic, when they're finicky, when they're not looking to feed. So if I can dance in their face, that's typically when I'm getting that bite. And that's also a scenario where something like the Ned rig may not work because it is getting buried that far in the muck, right? And they're just seeing like this little tail. Kind of looks like foliage, I don't know. If I'm not getting bit, I know I'm going to that Tokyo rig. And that's something I highly recommend you guys throw a lot this spring. Check it out. It's a really cool bait to be thrown around. It's a lot of fun to fish. You fish it kind of the same way as the rest of this. Typically because there's a weight on it, I'm throwing that on a bait caster setup and I'm going for that medium to medium heavy. You don't really need to go medium heavy. You definitely don't need heavy unless you're throwing like half an ounce of weights on there, which I don't recommend in the spring. Go lighter than you think on the weight. So go like quarter ounce, like a quarter ounce would be ideal on that. And maybe even a little bit lighter, eighth ounce, six ounce, quarter ounce, something in that range would be great. Gives you a little bit more action on the fall, a little bit more time as it falls versus just plummeting to the bottom and just dropping into that muck and getting stuck. <laughs> then you can just treat it like a jig. Just pop your rod a little bit, let it move. Make sure you're pausing three to five seconds in between pops. Let the fish key in on it. And then at some point you're gonna get bit, set that hook, you got a fish. All right, you guys, so those are the top five finesse plastic rigs that I think you should be throwing right now. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you're looking to try and bigger, 
the fish out. You wanna use your plastics more, you wanna use some terminal tackle. There's a lot of options in this video for that. If you guys liked the video, consider subscribing to the channel, smash the like on this video, ring that notification bell so you know when we drop more content. And then come hang out with me and my buddy Paul every Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live for our podcast. We talk to really cool people in the fishing industry and We'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. It's a really fun, interactive time that we have. Uh, we also just dropped memberships. So YouTube just dropped memberships, which allows us to interact with you in new and different ways that we otherwise couldn't. There's bonus content, there's stickers and badges, there's emojis you guys can use, there's discounts on our merch, there's all sorts of things you gain access to. So if you're interested, click the join button below and you can watch a video all about it and decide if it's right for you. Other than that, guys, I appreciate it so much. I hope that you get out there this spring that you're catching fish and maybe one of the tips from this video helps you if it did comment below let me know what you caught let me know which of these five rigs is your favorite rig i love hearing from you guys and i hope you have an awesome day we'll see you on the next video